Welcome back. Today we will delve some more into operating systems. Operating systems play a crucial role in managing and coordinating the various activities of a computer system. They provide a layer of software that enables users to interact with hardware resources and ensures efficient execution of programs. To fulfill these responsibilities, operating systems perform a range of functions, including process management, interrupt handling, deadlock resolution, and scheduling. In this introduction, we will provide a brief overview of some of these important operating system functions. Bootstrap. Process. The bootstrap process is like the starting point for an operating system. It's the first thing that happens when you turn on your computer or restart it. During the bootstrap process, the computer's hardware and firmware perform a series of actions to load the operating system into memory and kickstart its execution. This includes initializing important components like the processor, memory, and device controllers. Once the operating system kernel is loaded into memory, it takes over the management of the system. Process Management Process management is all about handling the different tasks and activities within an operating system. Definition A process is like a running instance of a program. It represents a specific task or unit of work that the operating system can schedule and execute. A process consists of program code, data, stack, and some other important information stored in a data structure called the Process Control Block. PCB. Process states, running. This is when a process is currently being executed by the computer's processor. Only one process can run on a single core CPU at a time, while multiple processes can run simultaneously on a multi-core CPU. Ready? When a process is ready, it means it's prepared to be executed but is waiting for the processor to be assigned to it. It's like waiting in a queue, ready to take its turn to run. Blocked. Sometimes a process needs to wait for something, like user input or the availability of a resource held by another process. When this happens, the process enters a blocked state until the required event or resource becomes available. Interrupt Mechanism the interrupt mechanism is a vital part of the operating system that allows it to handle events and requests efficiently. Interrupts are like signals generated by hardware devices or software to get the attention of the CPU. When an interrupt occurs, it's like a little, Hey, CPU, pay attention to me! The CPU then temporarily pauses its current activities, saves the state of the running process, and jumps to a specific interrupt handler. This handler is responsible for dealing with the interrupt and performing the necessary actions, such as handling I.O. operations, responding to exceptional conditions, or servicing hardware requests. Once the interrupt handler is done, the CPU goes back to where it left off, restoring the saved state and resuming the execution of the interrupted process. Deadlock and Deadlock Resolution Deadlock is a situation where multiple processes are stuck and can't make progress because they're waiting for each other to release resources. It's like a circular dependency that leads to a standstill. To resolve deadlocks, we have a few techniques. Deadlock prevention. This involves strategies to prevent deadlocks from occurring in the first place. The system can use methods like resource allocation policies, resource ordering, or avoiding the conditions that lead to deadlocks. Deadlock avoidance. The system dynamically analyzes resource allocation to detect and prevent potential deadlocks before they happen. Algorithms like the banker's algorithm can help ensure that resource allocation won't result in a deadlock. Deadlock detection and recovery. The system periodically checks for the presence of deadlocks. If a deadlock is detected, the system takes corrective actions, such as killing processes or preempting resources to resolve the deadlock. Another approach is rolling back the progress made by processes to a safe state before the deadlock occurred. Process Control Block, PCB. The Process Control Block, PCB, 
is like a file that the operating system keeps for each process. It contains important information about the process, allowing the operating system to manage and control processes effectively. Inside the PCB, you'll find details such as the process ID, a unique identifier, the program counter, which keeps track of the next instruction to be executed, CPU registers, memory management info, open file descriptors, process state, like running, ready, or blocked, process priority, and CPU scheduling information. The PCB helps the operating system keep track of processes and switch between them when needed. Scheduling algorithms. Scheduling algorithms determine the order in which processes get to run on the CPU. Let's talk about two common types. Preemptive scheduling. Shortest job first, SJF. This algorithm selects the process with the shortest burst time first, aiming to minimize the average waiting time and provide optimal execution time. If a shorter job arrives while another job is already running, the currently running job might be interrupted, preempted, to allow the shorter job to run. Round Robin. This algorithm allocates CPU time in fixed time slices, quantum, to each process in a circular manner. Each process gets a chance to run for a predefined time, and then the CPU moves to the next process in line. This ensures fair execution and prevents any process from hogging the CPU for too long. If a process doesn't finish within its time quantum, it's moved to the back of the ready queue to wait for its next turn. Non-preemptive scheduling, first come first serve, FCFS. This algorithm executes processes based on their arrival order. The first process that arrives is the first to be executed. It's a simple and easy to understand algorithm, but it can lead to longer average waiting times if a long running process arrives first. Shortest job first, SJF. Similar to the preemptive SJF algorithm, this one selects the process with the shortest burst time first. However, it doesn't interrupt a running process. It suffers from the disadvantage of not considering the arrival time of processes, which may result in starvation for long-running processes. These scheduling algorithms aim to optimize resource utilization, minimize response time, enhance system performance, and cater to specific requirements and priorities. I hope this video gives you a better understanding of the topic. Feel free to ask any further questions in the chat section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.